This is another in the first reading, or the first read series, where I just read a poem by a poet I don't know or I know very little about, and just do a first reading just to enjoy that poem without, you know, any pre-knowledge or without having read it and thought about it and run it through theory. Uh, this poet I have heard of. Um, I'm uh, sad to say I don't know her work at all, really. Uh, Victoria Guerrero Perano, I know she's done work with the Chilean poet Raul Zurita, so I'm interested in her work and want to know more about it. Um, she's Peruvian, and the translator that I'm sure is listed here somewhere, yes, Anastasia Spicer, I'm Honorio Spicer, so there's, there's two translators here. They're listed here on the side. I like this, this journal, as you can see, um, the web site is here for it. Um, it's, it's, it's got some really great translations up there. There's translations by some wonderful poets up there right now, like uh, Gabriel Goodington's in Norwegian, Theodor Gwiazdow, uh, it's Polish. Um, some great stuff. It's a good place to see what's going on around the world, I think, right now, at this present moment. I also like that it has the poem read by the original poet in the original, which I think is great, and then the Spanish, which I'm just going to click on just really quickly. I always like to look at a translation, see the form goes with it, to see what choices the translator made by that. And I'm just going to look at it. Like I said, I haven't read this one, so I don't know much about it at all. I'm just looking at the form on the page. There's a lot of spacing, um, kind of open form here. Um, Wives, they love boys, he Jenny goes to this. So these, uh, there's a big spot there. Let's see if it looks similar. That's hygienic poets, yeah, same thing. Um, just look at the first couple lines of the words I forget. I thread needles, red, black, blue, fuchsia, green. Fuchsia, weird, this. All right. Looks like a pretty close translation. Uh, you know, I'm not uh, an expert or anything, so I'm not going to go into the translation. I'm just going to read the English. From the Diary of a Proletarian Seamstress. Uh, that itself drew me, drew me uh, off the bat. Um, my grandmother was a seamstress, so I kind of connect that as somebody who has a, you know, went to get a doctorate in comparative literature, looking back to where, where I came from. This one. I leave words, I forget. I thread needles, red, black, blue, fuchsia, green. Tired of public competitions for teaching positions. I this, love this first little section, I leave words, I forget. Is it like, I leaving words, leaving words that I forget, or, ah, is the same in the Spanish there. I leave words, I forget. Like I forget anything, or I just forget the words I leave. I thread needles, red, black. These colors, all these colors, so colorful compared to the public competition for teaching positions. This capitalized stuff here, which doesn't feel very colorful. I begin to embroider each garment in my wardrobe. I arrange my doctoral diplomas and stow them near the bookshelves. It's like just packing away of this, um, of these degrees just stacked up like books somewhere else so they wouldn't feel inferior. The garments are all colorful and beautiful, whereas the diplomas are not. They're documents, as it is. CV back to O. I file it, bury it. So pushing these things back, these things that one works for in the contemporary world, as if it's you know, a signal of who you are or something, pushing them to the bookshelves. The market wants, wants professionals at record speed titles, and master's degree, etc. in bulk. But we seamstresses are timeless. This is a plane off of what the market wants versus like what is a kind of like this human seamstress thing. This is a very, like a, definitely very much like a capital driven thing versus this, the way the seamstress is as an intimately feminine thing. Um, here, as it's pitched, right? Poetry of my hands, poetry of my eyes. So it's shifting gears, like what is what is poetry? Poetry of my hands and my eyes. Um, 
not necessarily in the degrees. The great poetry of the world is not in degrees. Um, if you don't know that, graduate school managed to kill the poetic. <laughs> this one, I let go of fine arts and bell letters. At last, I realized they were out of my reach. I coined a new motto. <coughs> Excuse me. Coined a new modern motto in silvery cutout letters on black poster, Death to Hygienic Poets. I think hygienic poets is somehow like you've gotten rid of the b beautiful human element of the poetic when it's gone through and become, you know, fine arts. It's turned hygienic. Um, it's just fun. This reminds me a lot of the. There's a poem by this Italian poet, Eugenio Montale, called uh, Il Limone, uh, The Lemons, and where he talks about uh, a very similar thing, um, this kind of death to the hygienic poets wanting to walk among the lemon trees. And for now, I don't know what else to do. It's like throwing away all this stuff the, this poet has worked for, and has gone back to this thing which is elemental, being this seamstress, this thing that is innately tied to a culture this way. The bourgeoisie of the third world are ferocious murderers, and when they fall they take refuge in lovely seamstress, little women of the house who only who only knows to sew and read, read and sew, this kind of fall back to the women who have to can't keep things going and working and alive. On the bus, three women are embroidering. I love when I see this on the bus, actually. It has nothing to do with this point, but I actually really, I, I like it. Two crochets, but the uh, one knits. Nobody appreciates these arts anymore, which is, it feels true in certain ways. Like they've uh, been lost in the world of contemporary clothing where you go to the store and you forget the art of embroidering this way. My mother stitched all night. There's this connection to, very much to, to mother here, to the feminine. Stitched all night, her hands were her eyes. That's a great line. Did her eyes look at us? That's fun. I love that, that, that kind of idea of that mother working through her embroidery, and that's her way of watching, of being, of caring. She's condemned to do things with her hands so... And so embroider and embroider paint and grieve everything she couldn't do and death was only a word. There's a way in which, you know, the mother has to keep working, has to keep doing with hands. That's her way to express what it is, is her love. I've often thought of jumping out the window. Then I get to writing or cutting paper and forget about it. This kind of reconnection here with writing, cutting as connected to the seamstress is a, just a really awesome image that kind of the degrees are not here it's just the creative aspect is here in this last part wow what an amazing poem that, that was really great um the spanish is here of course um like i said it seems pretty close to it uh, like the bell arts the you know high letters. I just want to see one of these lines. Does she see with her eyes? All right, and that's fun. And like I said, you can listen to her. I don't know if we'll be able to hear it this way. De concursos públicos para plazas docentes, donde se abordar va a aprender en el retorno. Oh. En títulos doctorales, diario de una postura junto a la estantería de libros. Wow, she is also a great reader. I could listen to that uh, over and over and over. It's really great, great poem. Um, definitely feel like kicking myself a little bit for not reading more of her work before. This is definitely worthwhile. Um, the Peruvian poet Victoria Guerrero Perano. She usually just called Victoria Guerrero, I think. Um, I 
that's how I know her in the past. But anyway, first read. <laughs> 